the fishy folks and welcome to Michael's Fish Room. Today's video, how to ship fish. That's right folks, how to ship fish. Now I've done one of these videos a couple years ago, but with the recent debacle from Darren, seven out of 10 fish shipped dead, I've been getting a lot of questions. Well, how do you ship fish and what, what could he have done better? And so, I was talking to my buddy Keith from KJE Aquatics and he said, why don't you do a video on shipping fish? And I'm like, okay. So, here we go. Before we get started, do me a favor. If you haven't done so already, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then ding the notification bell so you know when I release a new video or if I go live. And uh, grab a snack and a beverage and let's get started. All right, fishy folks, let's talk about how to ship fish. Now, little history, uh, as you know, I received two separate boxes, a total of 10 fish from Darren. Seven of the 10 were dead, that's 70% DOA. And that's unacceptable. DOAs happen. I've had them, other shippers have had them, big companies have them. The point is not at 70%. There's no way you would make money at 70% DOA. So I, bl I blame Darren's shipping methods 100% on the DOA. He blamed the post office. There was the delay. My wife left the package outside for longer than two hours. It was like an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. It was 50 degrees outside. The fish should have been fine. But here we go. How to ship fish. Now, one of the keys to successfully shipping fish is fasting the fish for at least 48 hours before you bag them. And here's why. A healthy fish in a bag, even if they've eaten a couple hours before you ship them, two or three days, probably no problem. They won't pollute the water. But if there is a delay in shipping, more than likely their waste, poop and pee, will contaminate the water. Water quality will go down. Fish will die. It's a fact of life. There's no cycle in a bag. There's no beneficial bacteria. So water quality is gonna suffer. That's why I fast them because in case there's a delay, you have that cushion. All right. Now I have here a dip and pour and uh, let me show you my box. This is a medium flat rate box. I always ship priority mail, which is two to three days. Let's do some math about priority mail. Why is it two to three days? Why if I drop fish off on Monday and they get there on Wednesday, why is that three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Well, the first day doesn't really count. So here's how you do the math. You bring your fish to the post office on Monday. Monday night or sometime Monday, it goes to the local distribution center. I'm lucky, I have a, a pretty large one in my state, about 10 miles away, and a really large one in Philadelphia, about 15 miles away. So I'm lucky in that aspect. You bring it to your post office Monday, Monday night it goes to the distribution center. Sometime Tuesday, it goes to your local distribution center. Now, in most cases, it flies. If it drives, by truck, you know, it's usually overnight. The only time you get a three day priority mail is when there's, <coughs> I'm fine, no big distribution center in your area or the package is driven to the local distribution center and that distribution center is farther away than, from your house than they can drive in the second day, right? So back to the math, right? Monday, distribution center. Tuesday, your distribution center. Wednesday, delivered. Maybe Wednesday or Tuesday, uh, your local distribution center. Wednesday, driven to your post office and then delivered. It depends on distance, okay? That's, that's priority mail. Now, sometimes delays happen, trucks break down, uh, uh, extra work is, is needed and there aren't enough employees, whatever. In this case, um, I always ship priority and I rarely have a problem with delays. Now I've ha had a box lost in the mail. It did arrive 11 days later, all the fish were alive. I was even surprised. 11 days, no light, no food, no additional oxygen, no problem, I was shocked. So long as I've ever had fish in the mail and they've been fine. I've also had DOAs after only two days, this last one, two days. All right, so here's the box. Now, in this weather right now, we need insulation and heat pack. Soon we're only gonna need insulation, 
I will probably always use a heat pack. It's a cheap uh, insurance. But eventually, when it's warm, when it's above 60 degrees or so, we're not going to need a heat pack or insulation. So I'll, I'll talk about both methods. But anyway, we need insulation. So what do I use? Either I use pre-cut styrofoam, which I buy from a, a shipping supplier, uh, or I use this um, insulation, this blown-in insulation material, and here's what it looks like. Right, here's what it looks like. It's just blown-in insulation. Now, this stuff causes some dust, and it is a little messy, but it works great. I line the bottom of the box with about an inch. Let's talk about bagging fish. I always use polyfilter, and I'll put a link down below uh, where to get this. It comes in these sheets, and this helps absorb toxins in the water. Um, it's, it's just cheap insurance. In case, I didn't fast them long enough for whatever reason, I'm fine. In case there's a delay, it's cheap insurance. And I learned this from my good friend, Karen, uh, who I'm gonna be speaking at her local, she started a local fish school. We'll sleep speaking at that club in April if we actually have a meeting. But uh, anyway, I cut them into little tiny pieces like this. Boom, right in the water. Then we bag. Now, these are the bags I use. They're tall and they're wide. I would rather them be about an inch or two narrower I'd be able to fit more in a box more comfortably, but I buy these from my local fish store. He orders me a box. They come in a thousand. I buy the box. It lasts me six or eight months. Probably shorter now that I'm shipping more fish. There are two mil bags. That refers to the thickness. I love the sound of crinkling plastic. You want at least two mil bags. If, you're, if you have to buy one mil bags, which are really thin, you might want a triple bag. Um, if I were shipping fish, like bigger plecos or more aggressive fish, I would probably use three mil bags. Uh, when I got Chewy, he came in two three mil bags and one of them was colored so he couldn't see out. That was supposed to calm him down. Anyway, I take my dip and pour filled with my fish, two or three, up to five uh, uh, mutts in one bag is usually how I ship. Pour it in. And there we go. This is how much water you want. That's how much water I want. Let me just, again, this works for me. Michael's Fish Room, I've been doing this for the last three years. I have a pretty good success rate. I've learned these tips and tricks over the years, some from other YouTubers, because you know, where else are you gonna learn but YouTube? Anyway, now, here's, here's the magic part, right? You want oxygen, you want one, not oxygen, air. You want one third water, two thirds air. Now, if you're shipping with oxygen, or if you're shipping with breather bags, this method doesn't work. This is only regular old school bags, no oxygen, no pure oxygen. So, you wanna do the grab. There's the grab. Let's see that again in slow motion. The grab. There's the grab. All right, then you twist and tie a knot. I always tie knots, I don't use rubber bands. Rubber bands could break, knots aren't gonna come undone. And you pull as tight as you can. Now you have this tail. Now something I learned from Rachel O'Leary when I was practic or when I was learning how to ship is cut the tail off. And there's two reasons. One, it looks nicer. Two, I'm gonna put this in a second bag. I always double bag, always. <clears throat> and occasionally you get a leaker. One bag, two bags. I've never had a fish break a bag, but you know, I ship mostly small fish. Invert the bag. Now you might be saying to yourself, Mike, you're so rough with those fish. You don't give fish enough credit. Squeeze all the air out and twist. Fish are pretty resilient. The other thing someone once said is, Mike, Mike, you're gonna get the fish dizzy. They're gonna throw up in the bag. First of all, in order to get dizzy, you need an inner ear. Fish don't have an inner ear. Second of all, I've never seen a fish throw up. Have you? All right. Second knot, tight. Now feel, this. you can't feel, but you see what I'm doing. Cut the tail off, by the way. Now, there's a couple things I wanna show you about this bag, and this, this wasn't Darren's problem, but Darren's problem was not enough oxygen. 
tiny little bag, a little bit of water, very little oxygen. Now maybe he shipped with pure oxygen, but I don't think so. Anyway, <clears throat> there's no corners for fish to get stuck in, especially plecos. I have seen people where uh, they tie the corners with little rubber bands or they tape them so they're flat or so they're, they're round, they're not flat, and that works too. This works for me. So there's plenty of oxygen, plenty of air. I keep saying oxygen, you know what I mean. Third water, two thirds air, polyfill, fish are fine. Now, I got about an inch of the insulation. We put the bag in. Now, if it was not, if I wasn't using a heat pad, I would just put some newspaper to secure it, done. I always add samples. Thank you, Lisa from Super Cichlids for giving me samples. If you wanna buy fish food, guys, check out supercichlids.com. Uh, we gotta help support our local fish stores. If we always buy the cheapest price on Amazon, we are not going to have local fish stores anymore. Um, at least online retailers, I'm just saying. So, so samples, I put a discount card, I put a, uh, uh, another advertising card from my aquarium box. That's just me, right? Okay, polyfill. Now let's talk about the heat pack. Darren, Darren had a heat pack that was on the bottom and there was plastic on top. These heat packs need oxygen to work. Some people I see poke holes in their box so that the heat packs get enough oxygen. I've never had that problem. I don't seal them super tight. I use this uh, polyfill and that seems to work for me as far as oxygen and heat packs. I also don't ship when it's ridiculously cold. Uh, I won't ship if it's in the 40s, so I, I wait a little bit. Anyway, uh, I'm not gonna waste this heat pack, but there's a red line. You may or may not be able to see through the package, but that red line you want facing out to get the oxygen. I take a, a brown lunch bag, I learned this from Corey at Aquarium Co-op, place the heat pack in the bag. Why? Well, if plastic touches up against the heat pack, it's not gonna get oxygen. This, while it's a bag, it still allows oxygen transfer, air transfer, right? I put it on one side, doesn't matter what side. Then I pack insulation on the outside, okay? I'm not gonna do that because that's a waste for me, but pack insulation as tight as you can get it. Then seal it up. Just one piece of tape across the top. Now, sometimes I overpack boxes because we only want one package. One piece of tape. If the box is, is a little bursting at its seams, you can put more tape, but no need to put three or four pieces over here. Because when the customer goes to open it, they're gonna cut it. If there's too much, they're gonna cut deep and pop the bag and then you could run into a problem. And that's how I ship fish, folks. Again, I've had good luck with this method. This method works for me. If you do something different, let me know down in the comments below, and that's fine. Couple of uh, reminders. Buy your fish food from local fish stores or local online retailers like supercichlids.com. Uh, check out my boy Keith from KGE Aquatics because he's the one that suggested I make this video. If you're gonna ship fish, use Polyfilter. You can buy this at uh, your local fish store, maybe. If not, you can find it on Amazon. Yes, I'm recommending Amazon, because if you can't find it, you're gonna want it. Fast your fish for 24 hours, sorry. Fast your fish for 48 hours at least. Double bag, use Polyfilter. <clears throat> One third water, two thirds air. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know down below if you have any questions. folks and happy Sunday fun day to you guys before we get started if you haven't done so already do me a favor hit that subscribe button and uh, even that notification bell so you know when I go live or release a new video now we should not start with that we should start with the topic right yeah that's better you guys like that better um, which you probably may or may not be able to see probably may or may or not that's dumb I blame the way he packed shift and shift yeah 